first of all, we'd like to thank you, everyone, uh, to be here to participate in this research discussion. Uh, I hope that my face not looks like so worried about or afraid about this participation. I'm very proud and very, uh, very grateful for this opportunity to show what I'm doing in my PhD research in here. Uh, basically, in this presentation that I hope it will be short, I focus on three points uh, specific. The first part, I would like to offer a very brief contextual background about me, my university, and which kind of research we do in our department. Uh, after that, I will show some data from the statistical data from the digital divide phenomena in Brazil. And, and then I will show what I want to do in my research proposal. And finish that, uh, no more than three minutes, okay? Um, first of all, about me. Uh, I'm a PhD candidate or PhD student at the University of Sao Paulo, Brazil. And as you see, uh, I'm not originally a businessman. I'm an uh, information system. My bachelor is in information system. And then in a master and a PhD, I do a little change what I'm doing. Uh, because uh, during the, my undergraduate course, I participated as a research assistant in, in a research, and I discovered that, okay, I'm able to create technological artifacts with uh, good technical quality, but I'm not interested more in this part. I was interested in how this technological artifacts is used. How can they use, appropriate, contextualize the problems, benefits, and everything else that in information system area, that uh, computer information system area, I have no this openness to do this kind of research. And that's for why I changed for the business area. That's business a very huge area, and I have a specific little department that I can do this kind of research. And this is a part of my research interest in the in general words, the use of ICT in society in general, in governments, uh, the, and the perspective of social technical information system. Uh, and that's for why I'm studying uh, digital divide in my PhD. Talk about my university. Uh, I'm from University of Sao Paulo, as I already said, as a public university in Brazil. Uh, just to emphasize, public university in Brazil is a little bit different. Uh, it means that, according to Brazilian law, uh, the student does not pay uh, any fee or tuition in university. And of course, that all the budget is maintained by the state of Sao Paulo. It creates a huge problem if you think to manage a structure like that. And you have 80, 80 units, uh, 11 campus, and more, a huge amount of students, more than 5,000 of PhD students, including me. I hope so. And probably USP, uh, USP is the short name for the University of Sao Paulo in Portuguese. Uh, is one of the most important universities uh, research University in Brazil. But I work in a very specific area, uh, the School of Economics, Business and Account. Uh, I belong to the business department, and my research area is a very short group called the Information System and Quantitative Methods Research Unit. The name is not good because it shows that, oh, you only do quantitative research. Okay, this is a quantitative research, but it's not the case of the department. Uh, what uh, a different uh, kind of research, but it's the bureaucracy to change the name of the research is higher than the ability to change what kind of research we do. In our department, we do technology, uh, we do research related to USDIST in government. In this case, it's this line of research is coordinated by supervisor, Professor Nicolau Reinhardt. Uh, and they use the ICT in education, uh, big data, artificial intelligence, enterprise. In general, words, what we do is the, analyze the social, economic, or social, social aspects of ICT in several areas of knowledge. Okay, but just stop to talk about me. To talk about what I want to, uh, what I want to study specifically. That is the phenomenon of digital divide in Brazil. Uh, the folks here, uh, if you evaluate. In, uh, Google, the, what does it mean, digital divide, we'll see uh, a huge variety of definitions. And my objective here is not to offer a full, clear, and complete definition of the topic, but in this presentation, what I understand as a digital divide is the inequality. Inequality in terms of condition of internet access, but not only condition in terms of developing uh, internet or computer skills, 
and conditions or inequalities in terms of the use effectively of the internet. Okay? And, and the best way to show or to discuss this is show some statistical data about this phenomenon in Brazil. The most basic indicator here is the, the number of internet users in Brazil, which uh, the amount of persons could be classified as internet users. As you see, in the last 80 years, we have a, an improvement in our condition of internet access. Uh, in 2008, we have only 34%. It improves for 61%. We could discuss a lot about the policies and any implications that explain this increase, but I prefer to analyze not only in a good perspective, maybe I'm not a very positive guy, but evaluate the challenging what this data shows. Because if you analyze 61% in a country like Brazil, it means that you have a, at least uh, almost 40% of the population have a no internet access. And it's a huge problem if you consider access is the first barrier, the most basic barrier to improve or to harness the opportunities of a digital or the information society in general terms. We could evaluate the same graph uh, by different uh, demographic variables. As you see, another inequality in terms of Research, uh, in terms of geographic area, as you see, the number of internet users in urban areas is much higher than in urban areas, and otherwise we could evaluate the level of education. It is, uh, in, in terms of level of education, only reflects uh, economic barrier. Those who have a more level of education, more socioeconomic, a uh, higher socioeconomic status, higher level of income, we use the internet instead of those who have a uh, few conditions to do that. But another dimension we could see here is in terms of gender gap. Gender gap, no, sorry. Uh, gen uh, gender I should, the age gap. Okay, I just see the wrong word. Uh, as you see, uh, if you consider the first part of the, the graph, you join the first and second uh, age 10 to 24 years old. After that, you see that how old are you implies directly if you are an internet user or not. It shows clearly there's a huge uh, reduce of internet users. I'm not, I'm not able to see, uh, okay, now. We have 86% 86 of the members of 16 to 24, uh, five years old that use the internet, but at the same time, if you analyze the oldest group is on 90%. It's a huge difference. But okay, it's a one dimension to evaluate. We are considered the first barrier have or have not internet access. But we could evaluate, okay, just consider the 61% of the present internet users on the quality of internet users. And this is the, uh, an indicator, phase one, uh, that consider where these internet, uh, this users access internet. As you see, in the last eight years, there's an improvement in terms of home condition, home access, but at the same time, there is reduction of the number of the persons that access internet in paid public centers. But the increase here in 2016 in the number of the persons that use the internet on the move. It means use the internet in a car, in a public transport, while they are moving. And for sure, that, uh, that's indicator there is strong correlation between the use of mobile as a source of device of internet users. What does it mean that to evaluate only based on this dimension is not enough to, we have to consider now another dimension is device division. Uh, chain, okay. Uh, here I use the term to, to explain better, the kind of device used in internet. What we see in Brazil is that if you consider the, this for me is already lying, uh, we see the group that we call a multi-platform internet users those who use internet from computer, from mobile, and any other device. But in the last two years, it's not so much, we see in the green line, the increase of number of the persons that access the internet only from mobile, that we call mobile only users. And who is the person that uses internet only from mobile? Normally, they belong from rural areas, they are younger, at the same time, person with a lower level of education, uh, lower socioeconomic status, 
that those persons have no condition to afford or pay a computer or access or service of broadband in Brazil that change the way they access the internet using a mobile. And so one could say, okay, that's good because we can solve the problem of infrastructure, but you evaluate another dimensions, for example, in terms of development of skills and use, it could create a problem. Because probably the person that uses internet only mobile will, uh, will develop much less skills than those using in another source. Uh, it develop less skills will probably impact in terms of the effective use of the internet. And that's for why I'm here discussing the digital divide, consider uh, the variety of dimensions of this term. Access is not enough to evaluate the complexity of this phenomenon. It's a just a part, an important part, but uh, we should evaluate more than access. A skill is another important dimension, but here we not consider only the computer skills, only technical skills but consider much more information skills, your ability to look for information on the internet for any purpose, uh, ability to communicate, to interact on the web, or even content created in sharing content on the internet. But after that, we consider the effect of use, and here we have a lot of studies that will discuss any kind of use of the internet, ego, obvious service, and participation, uh, and any others. But what we discussed now uh, most recently is that we call here the tangible outcomes, or the third order digital divide. What the author will say is that, okay, I don't care about the uh, access, skills, use you do the internet. It's important, but it's not enough. I was interested in how can you convert this all uh, digital resource in terms of technical, the real benefits for personal life. For example, in terms to improve the economy, education, uh, finance, uh, finance, service, finance service. Uh, in other other, for example, health, leisure, uh, and strong social networks. So that's the focus that I'm consider here is see the digital divide phenomena, analyze all these dimensions, and for sure consider the effect of social demographic factors in terms in all these dimensions. Uh, if you have evaluate the literature in Brazil, the, there is a, a huge, uh, a great part of studies will focus on the dimension of access, because it's still is real problem to be overcome in Brazil, but it's not alone. We should consider another dimension. If that's my purpose in this PhD research, to evaluate. Okay, consider the access, but consider another dimensions. For example, the implication of access in terms of internet skills and in terms of the uses. And uses relate specifically with tangible outcomes or real benefits to real life or offline life. And that's it, my research questions. Uh, how internet access and social demographic factors influence the digital skills in Brazilian internet users and how this digital skills impact and harness online opportunities. Without showing a, offer any detail, uh, I prefer to show uh, what the research, my research model that I will test using the statistical data, uh, and this research in, in my, uh, sorry, in my PhD research. As you see, we have uh, here uh, the first part, what we call uh, the autonomy of uses, is how I measure the internet access. The second part, we have a, a myriad of options about internet skills, and the third part, online opportunities, I'm talking about type of use. I use the autonomy of use, not traditional internet access, because the, in the literature, internet access has a variety of definitions. One understands proportion, internet access, other understand location. And autonomy of use is the idea that, or maybe the best word, autonomy of use provided for internet access Oh, uh, the idea is to freedom, the freedom to access and use the internet where and when and how do you want. And to personalize this concept, we consider the three complementary dimensions. First, the internet access location. Uh, I consider that as an important dimension because those who use the internet in home and have opportunities to use it in another place develop much more autonomy of use than, for example, uh, has opportunity to choose the internet only in a TV center. 
Device is another important. We are saying which kind of device you use. Only computer, only mobile, or the both remote platform. And then the quality of internet access. Because you can, have, you can use internet anywhere, uh, in different device, but if your quality of internet is not good, for example, like a dial-up connection, probably the quality or kind of interaction due to internet will be restricted. That's for why I consider these three dimensions. The second part in the, in the model, that's the middle part. Okay, I'm not able to point here, but this is the middle part. <laughs> uh, this, I try to consider the variety of the, the internet skills. The first I call here is a web 1.0 skills, or basically consumer skills. The idea of these skills is technical skills when you talk about operational, but not computer skills. Technical skills to use the internet independent of the device you use. Information search or information skills, ability to select, to find information according to what you want. And here we have a, a most sophisticated internet skills related, for example, ability to communicate and uh, interact at the internet, communication social skills. And content creation, your ability to get information from different sources and create a new content and publish at the internet. In the final part, sorry guys, uh, the final part is online opportunity. As I said, is a type of use, but uh, it's a use strictly related to the tangible outcomes. What I want to say, if I talk about economic use, for example, you use the internet, for example, to look for a job or apply for a job. The tangible outcome you achieve is to find a job, improve your health, your economic condition, or for example, do an online course, a master course online. All of this we are focused not only the use, as I the contextualized way, but how can you convert this use in real benefits to uh, social life, to real life. Uh, the, the other dimension, social, uh, we are considered here the improvement of social networks even your personal or personal friends and family, but civic participation, political participation, interaction, for example, through e-participation initiatives with government is included in this dimension. Personal, uh, we are considered the personal well-being, for example, leisure and health activities. In, in the, we add uh, additional dimension here, there is e service that, uh, that is a little bit different from the other ones because in the theory that I used to propose this classification as I know not, nothing that fits very well with this service and in this service in Brazil has an important use of the internet that for why I add in the model the, the idea of this service I just finished the opted for a three research papers approach the, the first paper is evaluating the effect of autonomous use and demographic factors in development internet skills, in other words, we evaluate the first part of this model, okay, this first part, I'm not able to use this. Uh, the second paper, we evaluate the classification of Brazilian, propose the classification of Brazilian internet users based on their internet skills, here, uh, on the middle part. Practically, the second paper, I have a first, uh, the first version of this paper, I will show I will present the results in a conference in New Orleans in August, but we changed a lot. Uh, the paper is still different now, uh, and maybe after I can show some of what we find the results. In the third paper, we evaluate the all the chain, how the condition of access, uh, demographic factors, digital skills will impact it, and what important in the online opportunities. Uh, to perform this analysis, I will not collect data uh, personally. I use the secondary data produced by a Brazilian center, the regional center for studies on developed information society in Portuguese, CTPR. And the CTPR is a center in Brazil that develops a lot of service uh, in each one of the areas, households, enterprises, non-profit organizations, and electronic government. In all the data produced by CTPR is available to researchers, to, to, to agents in Brazilian government, in order to, 
to discuss and promote and promote improvements in Brazilian reality in terms of adoption of ICTs. And this service is created based on the international methodology standard, like uh, ITU or ACB. And the idea is that using this international methodology standard, we can compare the Brazilian reality with any other part of the world. Like do something wrong here? Ah, now comes back. Uh, basically, in this study, uh, I will use the ICT household survey. Is very specific survey uh, to use of the internet from Brazilian population with at least 10 years old. And for this analysis, I'm considered to use a longitudinal study using the data from 2014 and 2016 editions. And here, I'm not want to discuss in detail, but it's only to show the kind of technical statistics that I will uh, use to answer my research question. To do what I want to do, yeah, anyone to pay for it. Uh, as the first part, this final part, I believe, uh, is not productive to explain each item, each item, because we have this slide, as in each slide, we have uh, which one of the items of the research and use it to personalize the dimensions. Then I could show this part in our discussion, and I believe. The, that I will finish here, and I thank you very much for your attention, and mainly for your patience to hear me for, I don't know how many times, but <laughs> that's it. Thank you very much.